What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Now I have one question for you guys before we begin this recipe. What is the one snack food that you always see at any Guyanese function? Now if you're wondering what it is and you guessed salseo, also known as chicken foot, you are absolutely correct. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing my salseo recipe, also known as chicken foot. And this has been one of the most highly requested recipes for a while now, so I'm finally getting to share it with you guys. Now this is version one of two that I have on my channel. And I'm going to be sharing the other version at a later date because that's the way that my grandmother makes it and I want to do that video with her. So in today's video, sit back and relax and enjoy how to make this quick and simple snack. Now this is something that's very addictive so be careful because if you make it, I promise you, you will be sitting down with the entire bowl to eat. Now contrary to the name, although it's known as chicken foot in Guyana, also known as salseo, it doesn't have any chicken or meat products in it. It's totally vegetarian. So I hope you guys go ahead and give this a try. Let's get into it now. So the first step when making a salseo is to get your seasonings ready. Now I'm going very simple with the salseo today. I'm gonna use the most traditional seasonings that I know that my grandmother uses. I'm not gonna add anything extra into it. I'm just gonna go with the basics here. So in my mortar and pestle, I've added in some garlic cloves as well as some weary weary peppers. Now, if you don't have weary weary peppers, you can swap it out for any other type of hot pepper. And if you don't like anything spicy, you can omit the hot pepper totally. Do this as per your taste and your preferences. So all I'm gonna go ahead and do is pound this out until it is nice and fine and it has a nice pasty texture. Once you finish pounding the garlic and the hot pepper, you're gonna go ahead and start on the dough. So in my bowl here, I've added in some all-purpose flour. Then onto the all-purpose flour, I'm gonna go in with some ground dal powder, also known as split peas powder. Now, a little word about the ratios here. I'm using half and half um, flour to the dal powder or split peas powder, but if you wanted to, you could use more flour or you could use more dal powder. It totally depends on your own taste and preferences. I will say that the more dal powder or split peas powder that you add in, the more dense and more hard your salsa will be in the end. That's why I like to do half and half and not really go over with the split peas mixture because the more you add, the harder it gets and sometimes it's a little hard to bite into and chew. After you add in that split peas powder, you're gonna go in with some salt. And again, salt is to taste, it's totally as per your taste and preferences. Now, I will have my ingredients and my measurements in the description box below just so you can gauge how much salt that I put in to my salsa. And once you've added in that salt, you're gonna go in with some turmeric, also known as dai in Guyana. Now, you can add in as much or as little turmeric as you like. I know a lot of people like their salseo to be very yellow, and some people don't like it to be yellow at all. So do this however you like it. And a little word about this now, some people will also add curry powder into there, some people add a little bit of jeera, and some people even omit those spices totally, and they will just use some yellow food coloring to get that yellow color. Whatever way you wanna do it, go ahead and do it that way. After you've gone ahead and added in all of your dry ingredients together and you mix them up, you're gonna go in with your paste that you made with the garlic and the hot pepper. Now what you're gonna do now is you're gonna mix that into the dry ingredients alongside some water. Now you wanna be very careful as you're adding your water in. You wanna make sure you just add a little bit at a time so this way you can get a medium soft dough. This is something you do not want to be as sticky as roti because if it is, it's gonna be very hard to work with. That dal powder, it doesn't really have gluten in it itself, so it makes anything you work into it very sticky. So you wanna make sure not to add too much water. So I'm gonna keep streaming in a little bit of water at a time, and then I'll show you guys what the dough looks like when we're ready to roll it out. So as you guys can see, once I'm adding in that water, I'm not really kneading it that much. I'm just going ahead and squeezing all of it together. You basically wanna to continue to do this until all of the dry ingredients are incorporated into one large ball of dough. So I've gotten everything mixed together into one ball of dough, and as you guys can see, it is a soft dough, but it is not as soft as roti or sada roti or anything like that. Again, if you make it too soft, it'll be very, very hard to work with. And just a little precaution, if you do make it too soft by accident, feel free to go ahead and add in a little bit of dried flour. It will come together, just keep on adding in the flour. The reason why I'm telling you to be careful with the water is because I don't want you to have to keep adding in too much flour because it might be a little hard to work with in the end. So after you go ahead and form it into a dough ball, you're gonna go ahead and heat up a flat pan or a tawa, and then I'm gonna show you what to do next. So I'm making a very small batch of salseo. What I've done is I've gone ahead and split my big dough ball up into three equal portions. And basically what you're gonna do is 
spread it out onto your floured surface and you're gonna keep flowering it really well and then you're gonna go ahead and roll it out. Now you wanna roll it out to about a quarter of an inch. You don't really wanna go much thinner than that because if you make it too thin, your salsa will be too thin and too crispy and it won't really have any substance to it. So you're gonna go ahead and roll it out, make sure to get everything nice and even and then I'll show you what to do next. Once you've got your dough rolled out to about a quarter of an inch thickness, you're gonna go ahead and put it onto your heated griddle pan or your tawa or whatever flat pan you have. Now I'm using a regular saute pan here just to show you guys that you do not need a tawa to make things with dough. You can easily use a saute pan like I'm doing here. So basically what you're doing is here is on a very medium to low heat, you're gonna add in your piece of dough that you rolled out and you're just gonna leave it there for a few seconds. What we're trying to achieve here is just to dry out the dough a little bit. So this way it'll crisp up very fast when we put into the oil and it will be much easier to cut. Now some people do not like to do this step where they cook it in the pan a little bit. So if you don't wanna do that, go ahead and just start rolling your dough and cutting it right away. But if you want to make it how I make it, go ahead and dry it out in the pan just a little bit. So as you guys can see, I'm leaving it on for a few seconds. And then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna carefully lift it up and I'm gonna flip it over. Basically, you're gonna cook it for just about 30 seconds on each side, just until you see it hardens up and dries up a little bit. You don't wanna cook it much more than that because if you allow it to get too brown on the stove or allow it to swell up too much, then it's gonna fall apart in the hot oil as you're frying it and you really don't want that. So this is exactly what you're looking for. As you guys can see, it's dried up on the top. It has just a few little brown specks and that is totally okay. So at this point, I'm gonna take it off of the heat and I'm gonna roll out the rest of my doughs, my dough balls, and then I'm gonna go ahead and cook them just like I did this one. And salsa is not something that I make all the time. So again, I'm practicing alongside you guys, but I wanted to let you know that one thing that I found after making this recipe is that as you're rolling it out, try not to use too much dried flour because the more dried flour you add, the more dried flour will loose out in the oil as you're frying the salsa and it actually makes the oil start to burn at the bottom a bit, and then you get these little black flecks of burnt flour all over your salsa. So just be mindful of that. Don't add too much dried flour onto your dough as you're rolling it out. So I finished cooking all of my dough balls. Remember, I went ahead and I rolled them all out, and I put them onto the skillet just for about 30 seconds on each side until they dried out a bit. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking one of the flat circles that I made, and I'm gonna go ahead and just cut it up into thin strips. The best way to do this is to cut it in half or to cut it in thirds, stack it up on each other, and then you can slice it into very thin strips. What really helps during this time is to make sure that it is not too hot after you take it off of the stove or your tawa, and you wanna make sure to use a very sharp knife. And as you guys can see, it is cutting very easily. I'm making mine into pretty thin strips, but I know some people like a thicker salsa and some people like a thinner salsa. So whatever size preference you have, go ahead and do it as per your preferences. And what you want to do is go ahead and cut all of your pieces of dough. And then as you're nearing the end of cutting all of the pieces of dough, you're going to go ahead and heat up your pot with some oil. I'm using vegetable oil today and you want to heat it up on a medium to medium high heat. So my vegetable oil has been heating up for a couple of minutes now on a medium high heat. And now I'm going to drop in a small batch of my salseo pieces that I finished cutting up. Now you want to be very mindful. If your oil is way too hot, what's going to happen is your salseos are going to start to get very crispy and almost burnt on the outside. And then they're still going to be a little soft and wet on the inside. So you want to make sure you keep it on a medium heat and keep that oil regulated. So this way it cooks properly. You want to make sure that it has an even crunch all the way throughout. Another thing that you want to be very mindful of is when you're dropping them into the oil, make sure you don't overcrowd the pan. Because if you overcrowd the pan, then the temperature of the oil will drop and the salsa will soak up a lot of oil and not get crispy fast enough. And once you drop a batch in the oil, you wanna make sure to keep stirring it or moving it around every couple of seconds, so this way it gets an even brown coating all over the salsa. So basically I'm gonna keep on cooking this for maybe four to five minutes or just until it gets a light golden brown color, and then I'm gonna remove it from the heat. So my salsa took about four minutes to cook in the hot oil, and one of the biggest indications that you'll see when the salsa is done is that it's not vigorously bubbling in the pot anymore. The bubbles start to slow down. And as you guys can see, it has a beautiful golden brown color. It is not too dark and it's not too light. Now I wanted to mention something. Once you take it out of the oil, if you guys see here, it's a very light brown color. Once I take it out of the oil, it's gonna darken up a little bit just because they're so thin. They still have the oil on the inside and they continue to cook just a little bit. So be mindful of that when you're taking them out of the oil. 
Now, once you take your first batch out of the oil, you're going to continue cooking the rest of your salseo pieces until you've finished out all of them. And at that point, once you're done with everything, all of your hard work is done and you are ready to snack on your salseo. All right, so I finished frying all of my salseo and it is now ready to eat. The way that I recommend you eat this salseo is to get a handful of some of that warm salseo or chicken foot. You put it in a bowl and you douse it with some mango sauce or some mango chutney. That is the traditional way that I see people eating it. I know a lot of you guys tell me some stories about when you were growing up in Guyana and you would go home from school, you would buy salseo in little bags from a cart or from anybody who was selling it and they would douse it in mango sour or mango sauce. So that's the way I recommend to eat it, but you can eat it whatever way you want. I'm going to go ahead and stop this video now so I can snack on some. I might even eat this whole bowl. But before I go, I wanted to make sure you guys go ahead and like this video if you enjoyed it. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you are not subscribed yet. And if you click that little bell notification icon, you'll be notified every time I post my newest videos. And of course, keep leaving your amazing comments down below. I hope you all are staying safe and being well during this time. I'll see you guys very soon. Bye, guys.